your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element two, human impacts on distinctive landscapes. Date and title down in your books. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Distinctive landscapes, as we now know, are unique and this draws a lot of people to visit. We call these places that attract a lot of visitors honeypot sites. So let's start off by looking at a few key definitions. So first of all, a honeypot site is a place of special interest that attracts a lot of visitors or tourists. Now we looked last lesson at Snowdonia and that would be a good example of a honeypot site. But today we're going to have a look at the Lake District in Cumbria as another example. Now something that goes hand in hand with honeypot sites is how many people can actually visit safely. Well, that's called the carrying capacity. So that's the maximum population the environment can handle. Now, honeypot sites, more often than not, they will exceed their carrying capacity quite early on in the year. So that means that there's more people visiting the area that can be safely handled, and we mean safely in terms of without damaging the environment. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So there's gonna be positives and there's gonna be negatives of honeypot sites. Let's start off with the positives. So a lot of people coming into the area is naturally gonna bring a lot of money in to the rural economy. So a lot of these honeypot sites, a lot of these distinctive landscapes tend to be rural areas because more, more often than not, cities tend to look quite similar. So it brings a lot of money into the rural area. That in turn means that there can be more investment. So this could mean that there's more jobs being created, predominantly in the service sector. So supporting the running of um, tours, it could be running shops, hotels, things like that, but also, an investment in infrastructure. A lot of the local roads will be quite narrow, but to support the increase in traffic, they may widen roads, put in dual carriageways, increase bus services, things like that, which can have a benefit to the local area as well as the tourists. And then things like farming have not been very profitable in the last decade or so, maybe it's even longer. And with the increased amount of tourism in the rural area, it means that farms have been able to diversify. So that means they've been able to spread out more than just looking at farming, so raising animals or growing crops. So if you've been out on a drive in the countryside, you might have seen a little sign on the side of the road that says B&B and cafe or restaurant. And this is an example of a farm trying to spread out into the service economy to bring in some more money. So cafes, B&Bs, small hotels, camping pods or campsites are all going to bring in more money as more tourists come into the area as well. However, there are negatives to having an increased in number of tourists. So your carrying capacity has been exceeded. That means, particularly in the Lake District, where we have a lot of people coming for the natural scenery and the walks, footpath erosion becomes a major issue. So let's have a look at the photograph on the left-hand side. On first look, it looks like a dry riverbed, doesn't it? You've got like a V-shape, shape, and down the center here, you would imagine would be a river. Well, water does run down it, but it isn't a river. It used to be a footpath. At one point in time, it would have went from over here, straight over to that side, and it would have been fairly flat. Thousands and thousands, perhaps millions of visitors have walked up this footpath. The wear of people walking on it has created vertical erosion, eaten down, and it's created a small gully. That's then when it rained, meant that all the water has been funneled down this gully and even more erosion has taken place. When people walk over it, they trample grasses and plants. The vegetation anchors the soil in place. So when they're walking on it, they're killing the thing that's anchoring the soil there, which means that when water does run down it, it gets taken away even quicker till you get to the point where we're here, where you can see this woman standing in the bottom of a footpath and it goes straight above her head quite a lot. We also have, as mentioned, congested roads. The roads aren't designed for a lot of traffic in rural areas, so end up with a lot of traffic jams or people parking on the sides of grass verges, which in turn creates more erosion. And because it's such an idyllic place, a lot of people think, well, actually, this would be a nice place to live, or maybe I'd want to own a home to come out here in the summer. That's called a second home. Well, that pushes up the house prices. So locals that live there struggle to actually afford a home in the area. So we can have human impacts, we can also have environmental impacts. And generally, the environmental uh, impacts tend to be worse on honeypot sites. So these issues created by increased visitor numbers have a significant impact on our environment. 
or the drain of our natural resources. So what have they actually done? Well, you can see some photographs here. These are of the management of footpath erosion. So footpath erosion in the Lake District is a significant issue. The National Park has closed popular footpaths to allow the vegetation to regrow and they've diverted them onto routes that haven't been as well used and that gives the vegetation a chance to take hold again and stop that soil from um, being washed away. They've banned 4 by 4s from driving on fields and hills and developed car parks so people don't have to um, park on grass verges. But perhaps the most significant one is the management of footpaths. So as you can see here we've got some volunteers moving some stone onto the footpath so that's going to create as a barrier to the vertical erosion downward but also when it's combined with things like the sheep's wool they've dug out and put sheep's wool in that's going to absorb the rain the water it means that it's not going to start channeling out parts of the soil on the footpath and it's going to let it soak out slowly over time and then on top of that they'll probably put these huge boulders they're very resistant they're not going to wear down very quickly and that's going to protect the landscape. Well, that brings our lesson to an end. We'll continue at your own pace by completing the Now Try Task for Homework, Fastest Nest.